Hello and welcome. We come to you from the Startup Hub and that is Bengaluru. Talking about the Indian startup ecosystem, well, it is definitely thriving with ambition as well as innovation. However, when it comes to angel tax, debates are always triggered. The seventh budget that was presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman suggested that this angel tax will be abolished and that has definitely spread cheer among those from the startup sector. Without further ado, I want to begin the show, but let me actually tell you that this sector has definitely contributed to over $130 billion in funding since 2014. That definitely deserves an applause. I'm Pratibha Raman, and let me introduce the panelists for the day, starting with Mr. Sadashiv, partner, Constellation Blue. We also have Krupesh Bhatt, who's the CEO of SignDesk. We have Madhu Kumar Nair, who is the director of Biggie's Burger. I'm already starting to feel hungry. And we have Prasad Patole from uh, Reward Wally. He's the CEO of that firm. And uh, finally, we have Dr. Syed Mujahid Hussein, who is the co-founder of Hungry Koala Private Limited. Thank you so much for joining us. And let me begin the show with one of the most basic questions. And that is, what is angel tax? Pratibha, thank you for having me on this panel. Uh, so in 2012, uh, they introduced this concept of angel tax. Uh, we talked about in an unlisted company, if an investor invests uh, into the shares of those uh, company, which is more than the fair market value, the difference between fair market value and the subscription price of the shares, that's treated as an income and subject to tax. So this was uh, modified a bit in 2019, giving some exemptions uh, which are registered startup under the DPIIT. Uh, but in 2023, uh, certain types of investors are excluded. So over a period of time, this was a compliance task and as well as uh, challenging to justify some of these valuations as well as the difference when the startups is all about innovations and um, IP-led uh, technology-driven businesses. Uh, this was challenging compliance task for uh, startups and the founders. So hence, it was always an industry ask for uh, to reconsider and abolish this. I think this budget has taken care of that. Well, when it comes to the angel tax, it always stood at around 30.9% on funds. So how did it really affect the startups as such? For a layman, could you elaborate on that? I think broadly about 60-70% of the startups were impacted. Uh, when I say startup, these are funded startups, uh, right? So they got notices and then while uh, the economic impact is still something that we don't have the, the complete picture, but then it created a lot of uh, the noise and then it created some kind of a, you know, the lack of confidence in the mind of an angel investor. Typically angel investor is the one who writes your first check for your business. When the, uh, the, the tax laws are uh, uh, not clarified and then there is a, the, an ambiguity, uh, so it, it, it creates a lot of, uh, you know, the, the ambiguity in, in the system. So that is what uh, it impacted the entire ecosystem where some of the angel investors were not clear. While the tax is to be paid by the, the company who raised the funds, uh, then it also some, some of them thought that it will also have a tax implication on the on part of the angel investor. So I think it has created uh, uh, the, the first set of investors who are trusted in your business, uh, so that has impacted uh, the angel investment scene in the last several years, especially in the last uh, three to four years when uh, companies started receiving notices from the tax department. Well, I mean, how do you see this? Because this decision uh, with respect to the budget comes at a time when, um, uh, according to some data that I was reading about, talked about how this comes at a time when there is 60% drop in funding in 2023. And, uh, well, to give you more stats on that, the decline is more than 40% in 2022. How do you see this as, you know, giving a boost to the startup sector? See, actually, uh, if you look at it, uh, the uh, uh, tax was introduced uh, by Dr. Manmohan Singh, basically to curb the money launders. Uh, but uh, it had an unintended consequences on the investors and the startups. Uh, but this is a good move by the government to abolish the tax. And uh, I'm sure uh, with this, uh, the startups can really, uh, you know, breathe now, you know, and uh, they expect uh, more fundings coming into the system. And, uh, and also, I feel that uh, uh, this is in the, you know, the evaluation process as well for the uh, startups. And uh, this would give uh, uh, encouragement for a lot of new investors to get into, into startup. And I'm sure looking forward uh, uh, for many more reforms in this uh, 
uh, for the startups basically in the country. Then what happens to startups that had earlier received angel tax notices? What happens to them? Uh, as far as what, what we understand, I think uh, it, it should not, you know, should be pursued further. That's how it looks like. But uh, just coming to the point that, you know, what he just now mentioned, uh, the thing, uh, one of the opportunity that lies when this tax is abolished, uh, now if you go to US, there are multiple platforms where people can invest right from $1,000 to uh, $50,000. I think abolition of this tax gives an opportunity to have such kind of platform exist in India and that will also make a lot of startups survive. Now, as uh, this tax was introduced in 2013, if you look at the stats, it took some Im time for that to Im you know, impact the startup world. And if you see between 2016 to 2018, there are a lot of startups who ran out of money. And uh, so similarly, this abolition will actually show the results in two to three years from now. Dr. Syed, if you can actually explain to us as to how this angel tax abolition will help your uh, startup and what will be the next plan of action for you? Well, see, uh, Pratibha, I, I come from a medical field. I'm a uh, practicing pediatrician. So this was my passion to, to give something uh, every child deserves, that is clean nourishment. So we started Hungry Koala two years ago as a passion, as a thing. A journey of an entrepreneur is fraught with so many challenges on a daily basis, right? You wake up and you have this challenge, financial or legal or whatever. So this is definitely a welcome move. The, the contentious angel tax abolishment will now pave the way for, uh, for entrepreneurs like us uh, to seek more funding. So uh, in fact, in a, if you look at the global competitive, it will it'll add boon to that as well. And overall, if you look at it, the economic growth, job opportunities, everything, it's an added advantage. So definitely from a startup founder perspective, this is a very, very uh, welcome move. In fact, a pivotal change, I would say. And as you said, next two to three years, definitely there will be a substantial uh, improvement and growth you can see in, uh, among the startups. Well, that's interesting. You did touch upon employment there. So how do you all see the uh, total outlay of uh, 2 lakh crore when it comes to uh, the budget allocation for driving employment? If you ask me today, in India, the biggest problem uh, right, is, is unemployment. And if this angel, the very most important thing is the investors will have a lot of confidence now when they invest in any startup. And startups can actually fix the gap that we have currently you know, a lot of unemployed youth. Now, we at Reward Valley also hire a lot of interns, a lot of uh, freshers. And uh, if there is a funding available for more startups, more companies like us, I'm very sure it will directly, uh, you know, uh, help overcoming this unemployment issue that we have currently in India. Well, talking about, you know, the budget allocation, not just for employment, but in terms of skills development as well as education, how do you think that is going to affect the startup sector? I think uh, about um, uh, close to about 85, 90 lakh students graduate in India, of which about like 40, 45 percent are only job ready, right? Even we ourselves are facing that problem. The first six months when you onboard a new employee, uh, we'd have to spend a lot of time, resources in training them. So uh, we were expecting uh, some help from the government in this, uh, this segment. Uh, I think it's a welcome move that uh, I think there are some about five different schemes have been rolled out. Uh, in terms of uh, upskilling and also incentivizing uh, the new hiring uh, and also. However, I think there is still more to be done, right? I mean, what we are doing now is uh, we are, uh, uh, we are the, the students or the, the graduates who have got an offer will be incentivized. Either the companies or the students will be incentivized. But then what are we doing to create more jobs? Right? We are actually not necessarily creating more jobs, but, but we are incentivizing the jobs that are already created uh, I think there are a lot more things can be done in this front, uh, especially like what you do before uh, you uh, hire someone, right? Are they really job ready? Uh, can we offer the new, the modern skills, whether it's AI, machine learning, or the space technology and things like that? I think on that front, uh, the, it's, this, there, there are a few other things that could be done in, in terms of, uh, you know, incentivizing educational institutions and the universities. Uh, so typically about... Uh, uh, millions of students uh, emigrate out of India, uh, but then most of them will not really uh, the return. So what are we doing to attract them uh, so that uh, they'll come up and then either uh, start their own companies or uh, help improve the employment scheme? 
you did touch upon uh, the space tech uh, there but uh, however i think the budget uh, definitely had some good news on that front as well with respect to the 1000 crore venture capital fund that can be uh, provided as investments into the space economy how do you think that this will boost uh, the tech firms or the startup firms in that uh, industry so one thing is definitely there are some startups that at least i know some founders who are doing a wonderful job in the in that area so the the this step will also help because obviously these startups do not just do space there are a lot of ecosystem that that needs support right there are a lot of other smaller startups who work with them so if you ask me this uh, funding which comes uh, to this uh, sector automatically indirectly also helps this all the other uh, sectors which work with them for the execution right from the tech uh, to something into logistic everything so i see that that is how it will help uh did you ever think that there could have been something more that could have been done for the startup sector especially with respect to ai i remember one of them mentioning that there could have been more that could be done did you have any kind of a feeling as such yeah i would like to answer in fact uh, uh, i am from the food and beverages industry there a lot could have been done for the food and beverages unfortunately there should be some you know reform done in the gst which is not like you know in food and beverages we don't get any input tax which is uh, why you know the people uh, think twice to you know invest uh, in particularly we are in franchising business so we face this you know the our investors don't get the input so they should have done more on the gst part they should have done more reforms on the gst is what i feel i mean talking about other tax uh, for instance how, how do you see the concession when it comes to foreign firms and uh, the digital tax do you think that is going to benefit the startup ecosystem here in india i think uh, the the 2% levy that's they're going to abolish uh, it is going to definitely create a level playing uh, level playing field uh, however for domestic startups and then local companies uh, uh, may have to go through certain hurdles uh, because uh, it's not really a level playing field if you look at it that way right the kind of the funding available in india even though it's it runs into hundreds of billion dollars but it is a the minuscule number compared to to you know other developed part of the world so when you have access to uh, the fewer set of resources and then when when uh, you know are expected to compete with uh, the, the global technology companies and the big tech of the world so then i think uh, the the domestic startups also require some kind of help until we get there right so uh, this actually this uh, in a way it doesn't really help the startup ecosystem things like the the helping other industries like space tech uh, it's it's a good move uh it would be uh, nice to have this kind of support for other emerging uh, uh, the spaces like such as ai i mean whenever there is an announcement of the budget every common man would only look at the income tax slabs how does the startup industry look at uh, the tax assessment do you find it uh, um this uh, do you find it industry friendly for instance especially when it comes to e-commerce i think it has been cut down from 1% to 0.1% so how do you see all of this in general when it comes to your babies yeah. i think it's a absolutely positive move it it helps us in terms of you know because startups especially a bootstrap startups uh, when before even they go for a funding uh, the crucial element is are you able to uh, you know manage the monthly expenses so this kind of move definitely helps right away because then when we are doing a road mapping of our spending uh, you know we obviously have some extra pennies to calculate so it's it will definitely help and as i said the uh, a lot of startups which got wiped off from 2016 to 2018 so i think that wouldn't have happened if something like this was done at that time as he was just talking about uh, being bootstrapped for few, many years right no no we started as i said angry corner a couple of years ago <clears throat> you're still bootstrapped so when it comes to this corporate taxes <clears throat> it we get impacted a lot by this and this is a very very a productive move constructive move i would say uh, because every day every month end expenses you have to tally you have to you know take care of everything on your own so so uh, when when you reduce these taxes when it comes to a startup perspective it can lead to more profitability and helps us reinvest in the business again rather than we ending up spending more on taxes all all the time so overall yes uh, it is extremely welcome move so i would from the sta- uh, bootstrap startup point of view i would look at at that way Well, when it comes to tax rates for market assets, how do you see that? Because it's pretty difficult to remember the numbers. It's a five-fold increase in the securities transaction tax, 0.1 percent, and a 2.5 percent point percentage points hike in the long-term capital gains tax. So, how do you see that affecting? Because it has risen to around 12.5 percent now. So, specifically on the long-term capital gain tax, uh, 
uh, more specifically from the PVC industry standpoint, uh, always has been the ask to you know, put the level playing field for uh, with that of the listed securities. And if you look at it, it was 20% for the unlisted uh, space, long-term catalog and unlisted shares. So this has been taken care in the budget. It is a definitely welcome move. While indexation has been removed, but if you look at the, the invest, investing space in the unlisted space, so always there is a definitive timeline. Right? Unlike you, know, you hold in a real estate for a very long duration, as compared to that you know, unlisted space, and you have an exit period, especially with the funding funds, etc. So this this helps uh, them to kind of like reduce the taxation when they exit from the uh, private uh, unlisted space. So with respect to the listed space, definitely uh, this has been uh, uh, suboptimal as compared to because uh, the rates have been increased. But from a uh, PVC standpoint and the investment in the happening with P PVC standpoint, definitely a welcome move. You know, interestingly, when the budget was being announced, uh, I was noting what was happening there. And in the meantime, my camera persons were looking at their mobile phones, trying to see how the market was functioning. Seems like this budget has definitely spooked the rupee, and which has hit new lows. How do you see that? Do you, do you think that it is going to have a reverse in terms of its trend? I think uh, it was more of a neutral budget, and maybe that's why the market was expecting some, some kind of action either way, uh, and then that was not expected. It's good in a way. I think we are moving towards a more, a more of a stable economy. I think it's uh, still a balanced, uh, the budget, I would say. That's why I think the market was unsure. Uh, even I think drop uh, is also, it, is not, it was not significant. I'm sure it will recover uh, over time. Um, I think in, the, in terms of taxation, right, uh, if, the, if the goal is to create, uh, make India as a startup capital of the world, in the coming days, hopefully the, the government can consider um, streamlining GST and then setting up different slabs, right? If you look at the, the technology sector, it is still at 18% uh, slab for GST. But then if you look at the food, beverages and other industries, it is, it is uh, much less. But however, if you really want to develop and then if you want to achieve your, uh, the Vikasit 2047 goal, I feel that the technology and tools have to be considered as a basic need for any business. So then the cost of developing, deploying the technology has to be uh, brought down. So that means that the, the tax labs have to be reduced. Also, the, the GST also creates some kind of a working capital issues uh, because the moment that you raise the invoice, uh, you'll have to pay GST to the government maybe within the next seven, eight days. However, you will collect the money typically in, uh, in about 45 to 90 days. So that means that you are adding to the problem of working capital. Uh, so if there is a way to you know, delay GST payments, like once I get paid, I don't mind paying taxes. But then here, the GST payment has to be made before even I get paid. So these are the, some of the, uh, the, the persistent asks of the industry for the last several years. So hopefully, uh, you know, this, these uh, changes would be introduced uh, in the next budget. Uh, have you really been thinking about uh, the 4.9% deficit target on fiscal correction path? How do you see that? The current government uh, for the last several years has been uh, focusing on the infra development and uh, especially manufacturing and MSME sectors. So the deficit, I think it's... Uh, uh, still manageable uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's not like you know the government announced so many social schemes right you know there, there are several states elections coming so always that could have been one of the thing you know the current government which is with an alliance partners you know, they could have done it uh, but uh, I think uh, this is in line with the expectations of the industry as well as the finance ministry folks, etc. So There seems to be a lot that has been done even when it comes to MSMEs. How do you see that and how is that related to the startup sector? One of the uh, things you know, they announced uh, in this current budget about MSMEs, two major things. One is there's a separate scheme for uh, MSMEs you know, procuring the machineries especially. That's one. And second is uh, assessment for uh, credit for the MSMEs. So if you look at the, the new age MSMEs, which is more focused on digital, deep techs, etc., the assessment, great assessment has been the, the old ways of doing it and a lot of ratios, looking at the balance sheet, etc. So now there will be a new assessment or, you know, assessment way uh, to give the credit, etc. I think it is a very welcome move. Uh, it's a really a welcome move having this MSMS allocation. But at the same time, uh, government should ease the process of you know, availing the loan. So that's becoming a challenge. So though we talk about uh, 
uh, MSME available, uh, uh, availing an MSME loan, but you know, getting a loan is a big challenge, so they should ease in the process of uh, these loans. So that's where a lot of our investors you know, who want to invest in a franchisee, uh, they don't want to get into any other loans because the interest rates are very high and MSME is uh, giving a low interest rate, so though they apply for it, but most of the time it gets rejected. So they should look into that as well. Well, you know, much before uh, this uh, budget was being uh, uh, organized and announced, a lot of them from the startup sector had already had their wish list in place. And the first and foremost was definitely the abolition of angel tax. Now, when it comes to the next year's budget, do you already have a wish list in mind? Do you think that that needs to be the agenda that needs to be set for the union government? Sure. So, uh, I think uh, when... Uh, angel investor invests in the startup, right? That that money comes into uh, startup ecosystem, and when he takes an exit, uh, that money goes out of the startup ecosystem, and he gets taxed on that. Uh, if I if you ask me what will be my wish list is something like you know how we had in real estate index session, I think something like this can be introduced on the on the on the angel investment, where if that angel investor again reinvests uh, into the next uh, startup. <coughs> then that uh, tax should not be there. I think if that happens, number one, uh, the amount of money that is coming through angel funding will increase. Second, it will also open up the doors for the first time angel investors. So I think if that kind of uh, indexation is placed where the investor gets a benefit, I think that will be my wish list from the next year's budget. In fact, I guess we are running out of time, but I have one last question and that would be for the doctor here on our panel. Um, when it comes to the health sector, do you think, except for the good news with respect to the cancer drugs there, do you think there could have been more that could have been done when it comes to health sector and connecting that to the startup uh, firms? Absolutely. <clears throat> See, when it comes to health sector, it's not the first time. Since, uh, since at least a decade or two, we've been, uh, the, ever since we gra graduated, we look into the GDP allocation, whatever the budget allocation for healthcare, it's always uh, suboptimal, it's always meager, irrespective of which government have come forward. But I, as a doctor, strongly believe the <clears throat> success development of any country happens by health, longevity, and overall, <clears throat> you know, sustainability of the person, right, human being. So I think, I think irrespective of uh, the startup budget or irrespective, because see, if I am healthy, fit and fine, if my, my family is healthy, fit and fine, we can conquer the world. So I think uh, going forward, one of the wish lists from the doctor's perspective, of course, not as a startup founder, uh, because that's in my blood now, you know, the more than the startup thing, I'm a doctor primarily. So I think uh, that should be the priority, that should be the prerogative uh, going forward. Uh, we should, uh, government should look into the healthcare structure, uh, structure uh, sector as a primary focus and provide, allocate more budget uh, with respect to all um, segments. I'm coming from pediatrics, right? So child health, irrespective of your class, socioeconomic status, every child is so precious to father and mother. So I think that uh, should, that gap should be bridged. That's what I feel, yeah. Let's hope the government officials as well as uh, the politicians hear your thoughts. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. And let's hope for a healthy India and a healthy budget as well as a healthy startup sector here. Thank you, thank so, you so much, much for, for joining us. us. Thank right. Thank you so much. I thank my camera persons as well. This is Prati Baraman signing off for NDTV.